Hola amigos, in the last lesson we learned to talk about the daily routine. Today we will learn how to talk about something that we are doing at the time of speaking and in present. First, we will learn when and how we can use jiran for expressing the action that is in motion. We will practice regular and irregular verbs in jiran. We will also study some different usages of jirand. Well, we use jirand to talk about the actions that occur at the exact point of time of speaking. Por ejemplo, en este momento yo estoy hablando. I am speaking at this moment. Tú estás escuchando. You are listening at this point of time and you are doing an action of listening. I hope you remember the use of verb estar. In response to cómo estás, you say estoy bien. The infinitive of estoy you already know, don't you? Muy bien. Yes, es estar. But did you notice something new in the examples given above? Estoy hablando. Estoy escuchando. Estoy estudiando. Now, can you guess the infinitive of hablando? Yes. Excelente. Yes. The infinitive of hablando is hablar. Imagina que tu amigo te llama y te invita al cine, pero tú no tienes tiempo porque tienes examen. Manuel, hola, te llamo para invitarte al cine. ¿Vienes? How do you reply? You say, ahora no puedo ir al cine. Estoy estudiando porque mañana tengo un examen. Now you must be thinking about its formation and usages. Let me tell you that gerundio is almost always paired with the verb estar to express an action in motion. It is also important to know that in gerundio we conjugate AR ending verbs by adding ANDO, ANDO, to the infinitive. We eliminate AR from the verb in infinitive and add ANDO. Therefore, hablar becomes hablando. Por ejemplo, yo estoy hablando. I am speaking. Tú estás escuchando. You are listening. Él está cantando una canción. He is singing a song. When it comes to ER or IR ending verbs, we conjugate them substituting the ER and IR of the verbs with IENDO, yendo. Por ejemplo, comer is an ER ending verb and escribir an IR ending verb. We add yendo to both verbs, therefore they become comiendo and escribiendo. Suppose you are in a dining hall having dinner with the family and I call you and ask, Hola amigo, ¿qué estás haciendo? Here, haciendo is gerund of hacer, which is to do, and that's the verb, which is a regular verb in gerund form. How would you reply? You say, estoy Comiendo. Imagine that you are in a kitchen and your friend calls you and asks, Carlos, hola amigo, ¿cómo estás? ¿Qué estás haciendo? What do you say? Suppose you are cooking a special dish of Mexico. You say, hola Carlos, estoy bien. Pues ahora estoy cocinando el plato típico de México. Did you say this? En serio? Seriously? Muy bien. You may be thinking whether this jiran forms of verb that is ando and yendo change with different forms of conjugated verb or not. The jiran form of verb like hablando, comiendo, etc. do not change with different forms of verb. It remains hablando, comiendo and only the conjugation of a star verb changes. For example, yo estoy hablando, tú estás hablando. Él, ella, usted está hablando. Here, you can see that the conjugation of a star verb is only changing and not the gerund form hablando. Now, let's practice it. I will give you some verbs that you have to use in your replies and tell what you are doing at that moment. ¿Qué estás haciendo? Bailar. Hablar por teléfono. Comer la paella. Comprar pan. Esperar a Luis. Escribir una carta, jugar al fútbol, pasear por el parque, ver la televisión, abrir la ventana. 
El primer verbo es bailar. How did you reply with bailar? Did you say, estoy bailando? Sí. Excelente. Continúa. Continue. The next theme is hablar por teléfono. Así es. Estoy hablando por teléfono. Perfecto. Let's continue. Next verb is escribir una carta. You may know that escribir is an IR ending verb and the conjugation of this type of verbs are different. So you say, estoy escribiendo una carta. Now, suppose your friends are doing this action. How will you make a sentence with comer una paella? Cuidado, careful with the form of verb. You've got to say, mis amigos están comiendo la paella. My friends are eating paella. Ojo here. Están is used because the subject is plural. I hope you are familiar with the possessive adjectives. Miss, don't you? Good. Yes, it means my and miss is the plural form of me. The next verb is pasear por el parque. You have to use it for your mother. How will you say? Just say the verb carefully. It's for your mother. So you can say, Mi madre está paseando por el parque. My mother is having a walk in the park. Have you said like this, muy bien? You're doing well so far. Keep it up. Let's continue. In the next expression, suppose you're doing the action. How would you use ver la televisión in a sentence? Can you do this? Yes. Good. Go ahead. Yo estoy viendo la televisión. Perfecto. Well done. Let's continue. If I ask you, ¿qué están haciendo tus hermanos? And you have to use jugar al fútbol to play football. Is the reply. How will you say it? Go ahead and say it. You can say, mis hermanos están jugando al fútbol. How will you say comprar pan for your father? You can say, mi padre está comprando pan. Is it clear? Are you getting it? Muy bien. Let's proceed. Now, suppose you are at the bus stop waiting for your son Luis and your friend approaches you and asks, Hola, ¿qué estás haciendo aquí? How do you reply using esperar a Luis? Esperar is to wait. Well, you say, Hola, estoy esperando a mi hijo Luis. I'm waiting for my son Luis. And the last verb is abrir la ventana. How do you use it to reply, ¿Qué está haciendo tu hermana? In the reply, you say, Mi hermana está abriendo la ventana. My sister is opening the window. Is it clear? ¿Entiendes? Muy bien. You're doing well. Keep it up. Now let's practice to talk about some other actions in motion. We will now use irregular verbs in it. In the stem of ER or IR verbs, ends in a vowel, I-E-N-D-O, yendo, or changes to Y-E-N-D-O, yendo. In other words, if the last letter of a verb before it ends with ER or IR is a vowel like ler, caer, etc., it's an irregular verb and it is conjugated as yendo, Y-E-N-D-O, instead of I-E-N-D-O. Therefore, caer becomes cayendo, C-A-Y-E-N-D-O. Por ejemplo, estoy leyendo una novela. Can you guess the infinitive of leyendo? Sí, muy bien. Yes, the infinitive of leyendo is leer. Now, can you respond to the following questions using options given next to them? Por ejemplo, ¿qué está leyendo tu padre? Make sentence with leer una carta to read a letter. What would you say? Will you say, mi padre está leyendo una carta? Have you said like this? Yes? Perfecto. Keep it up. Now, you can answer another question. ¿Qué estás oyendo? Make a sentence with oír el canto de los pájaros. ¿Sabes qué significa oír? 
It means to hear. Listen carefully the question and respond. How will you say? You reply. Estoy oyendo el canto de los pájaros. Está muy bien. Very good. The next question is. ¿Qué están haciendo los arquitectos? Make a sentence with. Construir una casa. ¿Sabes el significado de arquitectos? Pues significa architects. And construir is to construct. I hope you know it. Hope you will reply. In the reply, you say, Ellos están construyendo una casa. There are also some verbs which need a stem change before adding the gerund ending. Any IR ending verb that has a stem change in the third person of past indefinite, E becomes I or O becomes U, will have the stem change in the gerund form. Like perir becomes pidiendo, perir becomes P I D I E N D O, and morir becomes M U R I E N D O. Morir becomes muriendo. Por ejemplo, estoy siguiendo una dieta. Seguir is to follow. Dieta is diet. I am following a diet or I am on diet. Respond to the next question using the verb given next to it. ¿Qué está haciendo el perro? The verb is dormir. Have you answered the question using the verb as per methods given above? Yes. Excelente. Yes, it is el perro está durmiendo. Let's continue. How would you reply to this? ¿Qué está haciendo el camarero? Servir el café. Well, have you said el camarero está sirviendo el café? Yes, muy bien. Yes, this is how you say. The next question is, ¿Qué está haciendo el mendigo? Pedir dinero. ¿Sabes qué significa el mendigo? No. El mendigo significa beggar. Pedir is to ask for something. What will you say in reply? El mendigo está pidiendo dinero. The beggar is asking for money. Did you say this? Muy bien. Sigue así. Keep it up. Let's see another example with a different verb. Mis padres están diciendo la verdad. Here, you can notice the use of irregular verb decir in gerund. Now, let's have corregir verb. ¿Sabes qué significa corregir? It means to correct. If I ask you, ¿qué están haciendo los profesores? And you have to use corregir verb with los examiners, how will you say it in a sentence? Just give it a try. Los profesores están corrigiendo los examiners. The professors are correcting the papers. Have you said this? Good. There's another expression that we use when we are very hungry. Do you know what is it? We can make it with morirse, to die. That is the verb. Can you guess the expression with morirse and hungry? No? Well, you can say, Me estoy muriendo de hambre. I'm dying of hunger or I'm starving. In this sentence, you notice the subject is dying himself or herself of hunger. This shows how you can form sentences using reflexive verbs in chirund. You would also have noticed that morirse here is stem changing verb. O is changing into U. Let's see some more examples with reflexive verb in chirund. Suppose you are staying with a friend in a rented flat. Suppose Someone calls on your phone asking for your friend, but he is in the bathroom and cannot answer the call. What will you say to that person at that moment? You can use ducharse, to take a shower, to make the sentence. Try it. How will you say? You say, Hola, en este momento se está duchando. Vuelve a llamarle más tarde. At this moment, he is taking a shower. Call him again later. The use of reflexive verb with gerund is in third person. ¿Sabes qué significa volver a llamar? It is to call again later. Ojo! Vuelve is imperative here. There are some time markers. 
marcadores temporales that require an action in motion. Ahora, ahora mismo, en este momento, hoy, últimamente. You've seen some of them and now on we will be practicing the rest of marcadores temporales in this lesson. Jiren can also be used to talk about the activities that we are doing nowadays which is temporal and not definite. For example, suppose your sister teaches in an institute as a part-time teacher. She changes the institutes frequently. Just to confirm where she is teaching now, I may ask you, ¿Dónde está enseñando tu hermana estos días? Suppose she is teaching at many institutes at a time. In reply, you say, Ella está dando clases en varios institutos. Or even if she is teaching at one place in the present time, you can say, Ella está enseñando en una escuela ahora. This shows that earlier she was teaching somewhere else and at present she is teaching at a school. Ahora is used as marcador temporal that we use to talk about what you are doing nowadays. For example, earlier you were teaching at a private institute but now you are teaching at a school. We can see another example. Ahora estoy trabajando en la universidad. It means now I am teaching at the university. But it gives a sense that earlier I was teaching somewhere else. In the same way, suppose your brother is working very hard and doesn't get time to take proper test. You can tell him, Estás trabajando demasiado estos días. Necesitas unas vacaciones. Estás llegando a casa muy tarde estos días. ¿Hay mucho trabajo en la oficina? Your brother is working a lot these days. He has never worked this much ever. It's only this time he's working a lot. In the same context, if I ask you, ¿Qué libro estás leyendo ahora? How will you reply? You can answer, Estoy leyendo una novela de Gabriel García Márquez, Cien años de soledad. This means you're reading the book at present. You may have finished reading the other book and now you're reading this one. The next marcador temporal related to habitual activities we can practice is ultimamente, lately. You must be thinking what time of a time marker is this, when and where to use it, etc. Well, we use ultimamente, por ejemplo, ultimamente estoy pensando en María. It means, I have been thinking about María lately. ¿Y tú? ¿Qué estás haciendo ultimamente? en tu trabajo, con tus amigos, en casa, etc. Do you understand the meaning of this question? Good. Now you can answer this question with appropriate form of verb. You say, Últimamente estoy trabajando en una empresa multinacional como traductor. Estoy saliendo mucho de noche con los amigos del colegio y estoy arreglando la casa. I've been working in a multinational company as translator. I have been going out with friends at night and I have been arranging the house. The other example is, Últimamente mi hermana está haciendo mucho deporte porque tiene sobrepeso. My sister has been working out a lot lately because she is overweight. Let's see some other usages of gerund. You should know that we can use gerund to indicate the state or action that started in past but not yet concluded combined with a conjugated auxiliary verb, seguir or continuar. Por ejemplo, Yo sigo teniendo problemas en subjuntivo. I am still having problems with subjunctive. Mi hermana continúa teniendo problemas de salud. Do you know the meaning of sigo? Yes? Good. Yes, it's a form of seguir verb, which means to follow. But in this context, it is used with a sense of continuation. In these two examples given above, we can notice that gerund is used without a star verb to express the continuity in action or to keep on doing something. We use seguir or continuar, which is to continue with the gerund. Here, the person is still having that problem. Let's see some more examples. Mi padre sigue haciendo el régimen. My father is still on a diet. ¿Sabes qué significa hacer el régimen? 
it is to be on diet. It's been some time when your father started the diet and he's still continuing that. Another way of saying the same thing with different structure is Mi padre continúa haciendo el régimen. In this sentence, the use of continuar verb also indicates the continuity of action. This structure is very similar to earlier examples that we just saw. Let's continue and see some more examples. Suppose Carlos got a job and left Madrid to live in Salamanca and his best friend Raul is still living in Madrid. One day Carlos calls Raul and asks about him and his girlfriend and also whether he is still living there. Let's have a look at their conversation. Carlos, hola amigo, ¿qué tal? Raul, hola, todo bien, ¿y tú? Carlos, muy bien, ¿qué tal tu novia? ¿Sigue saliendo con ella? Raúl, ella está muy bien. Sí, sigo saliendo con la misma chica. Carlos, muy bien. ¿Y sigues viviendo en Madrid? Raúl, sí, sigo viviendo en Madrid. In this conversation, Carlos is asking two different questions to his friend Raúl, but the structures of both questions are the same. ¿Entiendes toda la conversación? ¿Sabes qué significa seguir saliendo? Pues seguir saliendo con alguien is a frequently asked question by the youngsters in Spain to know whether the other person is still dating the same girl. It means to continue dating the same girl or boy. Sigue saliendo con ella means you are still dating the same girl. The other question that appears in this conversation is ¿Sigues viviendo en Madrid? meaning, are you still living in Madrid? In both the sentences, seguir querundio is used to indicate the action in continuity. So, we saw how seguir and continuar verbs are used to talk about the continuation of action until now. Now, let's see another use of gerund, which is very similar to what we just learned. Let me tell you that it is also used to express the duration of an action started in past and continues till present, but it expresses the amount of time that it makes to carry out an action. Por ejemplo, Yo llevo casi dos años estudiando español. I have been studying Spanish for almost two years. ¿Sabes el significado de llevo? Yes, muy bien. Yes, llevo is the first person conjugation of the verb llevar and it means to carry. It is important to know that llevar with gerundio or gerund is used to talk about the action started some time ago or some days or weeks or years ago and still continuing. Cuidado, careful, this structure is only used with a certain quantity of time like Yo llevo cuatro años enseñando español. I have been teaching Spanish for the last four years. Suppose I ask you, ¿cuántos años llevas trabajando en la agencia de viajes? How long have you been working in this travel agency? How would you reply? Have you understood the structure well? ¿Sabes qué significa cuánto? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. It's how many or how much? Go ahead. You can say, Yo llevo tres años trabajando en la agencia de viajes. I have been working in this travel agency for the last three years. The next question is about your sister. ¿Cuánto tiempo lleva tu hermana aprendiendo italiano? How long has your sister been studying Italian? What can you say in reply? Well, you say, Ella lleva dos semanas aprendiendo italiano. She has been learning Italian for the last two months. I hope you understand how this structure with Yevar is working here. You don't need to give the exact year and date, but just amount of time. Let's see some more examples. If you got a question, ¿Cuánto tiempo llevas viviendo en Hyderabad? Suppose you have been living in Hyderabad for the last four months. What will you say? Yo llevo cuatro meses viviendo en Hyderabad. 
I have been living in Hyderabad for the last four months. ¿Cuántas horas lleváis vosotros esperando en la parada de autobús? ¿Sabes qué significa parada de autobús? Yes, it means a bus stop. Suppose you have been waiting there for four hours. How will you reply? Well, in reply, all you can say is Nosotros llevamos dos horas esperando en la parada de autobús. We have been waiting at the bus stop for the last two hours. So, in this lesson, we learned various usages of gerund. We have seen how gerund is used to talk about an action that is taking place at the time of speaking, like estoy hablando, and also how it can be used to talk about an action that is not definite and that takes place nowadays. We have practiced various marcadores temporales of gerund. We have also seen how to express continuity in action until present using seguir or continuar verbs with gerund. That's all for today. We will meet again with a new tense and a new topic. Adios. Hasta luego.